Okay, is everyone suitably excited with just 10 seconds to go? Down, Chris. Does the person who can? Three, four, three, two, one. one. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to say is you may have noticed that in Chris's introduction, my one before, I said you may need to stay alert. Now, have you realised this apparently oh, yeah. will be the buzzwords tonight for Boris's <laughs> announcement at 17, which shows how on the ball your quiz master is by accident. <laughs> <laughs> and in that connection, can I just say that I don't Left think... Prince Scotland. <laughs> where, where we still have to stay at home. <laughs> ah, we'll have to be careful. Um, I'm sure we won't be going on past 6.30 or barely, so I don't see this getting in the way remotely at 7pm. I thought I'd just say that. Um, I have got a glass of wine standing by, but I won't actually start sipping it until nearer 6, else you'll think I'm very loose. So... I'm going to go straight into it. Am I still at the right volume or am I beginning to shout? Sounds, sounds okay. I'm there. Okay. Perfect. I, I'm ready to be corrected on that. So question okay. one, let's go into it. These yes. were meant to be relatively easy and I have generously said one point for each right answer. So you can pick up some easy points here compared with some questions later. So A, Adam and Eve were all alone in which full word garden and the answer is surprisingly the garden of eden b the hanging gardens of where and the answer is Babylon. Yay. c what's the name of the major rhs garden just outside the m25 ring which has just had a very large redevelopment of its buildings now, i think jeremy paxman here would say the answer is of course Wisley. Hooray. But I won't say, of course, again tonight if I keep okay. to my plan. <coughs> Opened in 1860 to house a flower market and redeveloped in the 1990s, what is the two word name of the largest and most beautiful public area inside the Royal Opera House? And the answer there is Floral Hall. Oh, Floral Hall, not Cobble Garden. Oh, 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 oh. I know it has been named after a sponsor or two in recent years, but those names have never settled, nor has the sponsorship. So I think everybody calls it the Floral Hall. Yeah. And Mary, you, you chipped in there saying, isn't it Covent Garden? That's not actually part of the Royal Opera House. Yeah, that's what I thought. That, it just seemed a bit confusing. <laughs> Hopeless. Yes. Yeah. Hopeless. Okay. Yeah. That's got us off to a bad start, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Hopeless. Question two. Which two very famous British rose breeders died in January 2013 and December 2018, respectively? One point for each name, and the answer is Peter Beals yeah. and David yeah. Austin. Yeah. David Austin died in 18. Yeah. Um, number three, this is one point or three or more right answers. And here uh, I'm after the um, species name that precedes the names you see here. So I'll go to the answers, and the answer to A is Viburnum, Mariesii, yeah. mm -hmm. B is Geranium, Rosanne, C is Rosa, or Rose, Moisei, uh, D is Syringa, or Lilac, Vulgaris, yeah. and E is Actinidia, Columicta. Why is... leaves one. Can I ask a question? Of course. Why is a Geranium a shrub? Here, here. Oh dear, I thought I'd be picked up with things like that. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I have worked hard actually to impress you by trying to make sure that things only have one possible uh, <laughs> species name or, or um, variety name. Although later there is an alternative. So there you are, that's the first question. Well done. No marks for corrections. I, I think Bulgaris has a, a number of species with the same suffix. But... Okay, well done, but no extra marks. <laughs> <laughs> Kaluna um, Kaluna Bulgaris, yeah. Kaluna. Yes, that's right. I should do chip in with these things. It's rather nice correction. Um, <clears throat> question four, if you're ready. Yeah. So National Trust has one, but one only. <coughs> famous girls' school is the neighbour of one, and Michael Heseltine has one. What is it? And the answer is Arboretum. Oh, is that? Hmm. But what garden? Question five. 
if you groan if I'm going too fast. Five, Henri Matisse yeah. painted them, 1914. Marc Chagall painted Lovers Among Them, 1930. They were in the title of a Walt Whitman poem, 1865, and we'll gather them. What are they? And the answer is lilacs. Hey! Spring again. Yes, dear. Mm, we'll gather the lilacs in the spring again. <laughs> six. Uh, question six, a campestri, a capodocicum, if I'm saying it right, and a negundo, that sounds more like a drink, are all varieties of which species of tree? Asa. The answer Asa. is Asa. Okay. But somebody may say it's a shrub. I think Asa can be either, <laughs> depending on your Asa or your views, probably. Seven. What is the name of the famous garden in Herefordshire created by Sir Roy Strong and his late wife, Julia Trevelyan Oman? I love that name of hers. Mm -hmm. The answer is Laskett. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter about spelling tonight, by the way, if it's recognisably more or less the right word, that's, that's right. Do it again without. And we should have said earlier that we are trusting you to be honest about your marking for when we get, get around <laughs> to the, uh, the, the answers. We won't be accepting that anyone got 75, I'm sure. <laughs> Jim, that's very young. Well, <laughs> question eight. Every family has one. The three words. What are they? What do you want to say? Family tree. Family tree. Family tree. Well done. Okay. Family tree. One mark. Family tree. I put genus, species, and variety. Hey. <laughs> I put mother, child. Family tree. Question nine. Here you get one point for three right answers, and two if you get all six. So what is the Latin name for the following plants? And mm -hmm. so question and answer straight away. A, morning glory is Ipomoea, Ipomoea, how do you pronounce it? Yeah. Iris is Iridaceae. What was that? What's that's the Iris? Name. That's Iris. Iris Iridaceae. No, that's oh. family. Yeah. In the family Iridaceae. Mm -hmm. yeah. The name careful. for Iris is Iris. Yeah. Okay. Well, sorry about that. Yeah. I thought yeah. I looked everything up, but I just got iridaceae. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to move smartly on. I don't know how to score that. <laughs> doesn't matter. You, you get one point for three. Maybe the Maybe book was wrong. Five, you can have both points. <laughs> <laughs> um, where have we got to? The next one, honeysuckle. The next one, honeysuckle, is Lonichera. Yes, that's that. The next one, one foam flower, is Tiarella. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mallow is Lavatera. Oh, of course. For Mallow. This one, I'm going to miss, is Nigella. Nigella. Is it one point for three? Number 10. Question 10. This is the first EBTS question. Was the first chairman of EBTS Europe when the EBTS was converted into a federal European body in 2007-8. And I put in a clue, well known on EBTS garden visits for finding a quiet spot and settling down to draw. And the answer there is Bill Seddon Brown. Yeah. There's a picture of it too. Well done, Chris. Uh oh. You, Chris may not have a picture of the next answer. Um, I don't think he would have been there. But uh, <laughs> Question 11, this is a quote. If you have a garden and a library, you have everything you need. Who famously said that? Clue, this, this is prior to 1000 AD. And the answer is Cicero. Yes. There are a number of good quotes attached to Cicero, but that's, I think, the garden one. Cicero Now 12, put in a bit of more modern sort of stuff. A successful 1989 film <coughs> shot in Louisiana yes, starred a galaxy of actresses <coughs> Shirley MacLaine, Dolly Parton, Daryl Hannah, Olympia Dukakis, and a then 27 year old Julia Roberts. The author said he intended the title to capture, quotes, the complex mix of strength and vulnerability, quotes, exhibited by the women he knew as he grew up who are portrayed in the film. What is this two word title? The answer is steel magnolias. Oh. It was a rather clever two-word title for that. He chose. Item 13. What is the official new name for sedum? 
pronouncing me name, but the answer is Hilo Telephium. Good Lord. <laughs> of course. Drug. I've got Hilo something. Will that give me half a mark? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I've taken the mark for that. Hilo anything is pretty good, I think. Oh, okay. Um, it does sound like a drug, though, doesn't it? Um, 14. Now, here Maybe. I'm after the species name that comes before what you see here. These are trees or shrubs, so I said that wisely with an oblique. The first one is a bit of a pronunciation exercise for me, but I do enjoy it. It's Catalpa mm. oh. nonioides. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a cartoon character. The second one is Cytesis, yeah. Now the third one is either Hydrangea or Davidia in Volucrata. Yeah. They're both right, or if you like, either is right. The next one is Ginkgo biloba, that's yes. D. Got that. And E is Uartia, Pseudo Camellia. Yeah. So one point for three right answers and two points for all five. Fifteen. From a ceremony of carols by Benjamin Britten, the first line, um, I have spelt this correctly, of one famous medieval carol is, there is no dot 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 of such vertu. What is the word missing there? And the answer is rose. Oh, got that right. Oh, I, good oh, I just guessed that. <coughs> well done. A very famous choral piece for those who well, well. 16. Um, I thought this question was interesting but quite difficult. Mm. <laughs> um, like I've never really thought about this before, but mm. anyway, one point for three right answers. Mm. And I think two very well deserved points if you got all six. Oh, so I've learned a lot on this one. 16A, the national flower of Australia is the golden wattle. Yeah. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Of France is the iris, or if you prefer the fleur de lis. Oh, I thought that was. Yes. certainly prefer fleur de lis. Of course. Uh, Syria, see, Syria is jasmine. And it's a lily. The Ukraine is the sunflower. Oh, okay. The Hong Kong is the orchid. Yeah. Oh, really? That is the chamomile. Oh, there we go. Anybody else find this interesting? Yes. Neil said deadly nightshade for Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably deserve a point for wit. <laughs> a lovely answer. Uh, 17. For each of the following three species, how many varieties to the nearest of do you think they have? Oh, and of course, Diabolical. the source and my source for this is Wikipedia. So Acer, the answer is over 300. So if you're within 50 of that, that's the point. Next one, Rose. I thought there'd be more, but it's over 300 again, according to Wikipedia. The Geranium, Wikipedia gets very precise and says 422. Two. No. So 50 either side of that. Good Lord. Good score. Mm -hmm. That's one point for each Yeah, we'll be careful. Yeah, to this 50. <laughs> Question 18, shorter question. Great Dixter in East Sussex was the home and creation of which famous gardener and gardening writer? The answer is, do I hear everybody saying? Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lloyd, well known, and now dead. 19, this time both your answers need to be right to earn one point on question 19. What is the name for a woody plant without a single main trunk? That's a shrub. shrub. It's the name for a woody plant shrub. usually yeah. with a single main trunk, and that's a tree. tree. Yeah, right. So you need both. Well, I put bush. Well, I shouldn't put, yeah, you put shrub, I suppose. Well, we get naught. Why? I've got tree. You've got to get both right. I've got to get both right. Go I've, got to keep it, I've got to keep tabs on that. She's always trying to give herself half a point or a quarter of a point. The thing is nearly right. <laughs> Very despotic yeah. husband you have, Mary, but I think I knew that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 20 is another EBTS one. Who was the chairman of the EBTS from 2000 to 2005? And a well-known figure on many of our trips. The clue, you may not get this answer for all the tea in China. 
The reason for this is he was a large importer of tea from China and is an acknowledged expert on tea. And the answer is Bruce Ginsburg. Another picture. <laughs> It's a grim picture. <laughs> the only one I could actually find. I, <laughs> but I thought it was good because it's got all the box in the background. I, I'm not seeing any of these pictures, Chris. I'm not seeing any of pictures. This was a clip from him on South Today when there was to, they were talking about the uh, box tree caterpillar. I'm not, I'm not That's a bit concerned, though. <laughs> very worried. They were going to die, didn't they? Oh, I see. You've got to do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Now, question 21, I thought I ought to have a few superlatives or records, so I dived into the Guinness Book of Records, actually it's called Guinness World Records, I see, on the subject of trees. So here it is, um, one point no. three, correct answer. A, the earliest surviving species of tree first appeared about 160 million years ago during the Jurassic era. They've clearly been guided by the science, was my aside. <clears throat> China. What is the name of this species of tree? And the answer is maidenhair or uh, ginkgo biloba. Yes. Oh, oh, funny, okay. Back again. Okay, um, by chance, I'm not yes. single minded about those. B. The longest avenue of trees in the world is in Japan. It's in three parts converging on Meichi City. It has a total length of 27 miles. It's planted in 1628 to 48 with originally some 200,000 trees. What is the name of this species of tree? I didn't hear a chorus, but the answer is Cryptomeria. Cryptomeria Ooh, japonica. Yeah. 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 The fastest growing species of tree in the world can grow by six meters in its first year. Native to China, it is now naturalized in the USA. What is this species of tree? And the answer is the Paulonia tomentosa. Hey, hey, got... mm -hmm. mm. Yes, I think. It's such a pub. One point for that. Yeah. They're all separate. Yeah. Twenty-two. <clears throat> is this the right speed and still the right volume? Yes. Doing yeah. very well. Good. Yeah. Question is two. A British woman writer and philosopher and a dame who died in 1999 is probably best known for her books Under the Net, The Sea, The Sea, and An Accidental Man. What is her name? The answer is Aris Murdoch. Murdoch. Hooray! <laughs> of course. Question 10, 23. Yes. Two words, the second a plural word, link 18th century European nobility to Sunderland, Ventnor, and the other white, Margate, and one other town in England which is better known than those three, by which I meant Blackpool, but I thought that might give the game yeah. away a bit too uh -huh. easy. And the answer is Winter Gardens. Oh. Yeah. Anybody get that? No. no, I didn't know. Yeah. Couldn't make head or tail of that question. Almost got losing I still don't understand that. <laughs> 24. Another quote. To plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. Which beautiful film star, internationally famous, said that? Now here we are in modern times. Ava Gardner. No. <laughs> Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realise well, Audrey Hepburn came out with quite a number of quotes that have been rather treasured okay. since. I had no idea she did. But it seems so. Uh, 25. What is the common name in English for these plants? And here is one point for three right answers. Two points for all six. So the common name of Cotinus is, is smokebush. Oryngium is sea holly. Yes. Yeah. Well, pulmonaria is lungwort. Yes. It's a horrid name, I think. Yeah. Uh, of erythmum is wallflower. Yes. yes. Easier word. Yes. Of calistemon is bottle brush. Oh, and potentilla, I didn't really know this before, but it's sank foil. Yeah. Hey. Oh, no. Which is hardly in English, but yeah. if you Google it, everything says in English it's called yeah. sunfire. <laughs> oh, I've got three answers here again. So you've got all those, haven't you, Yeah. So we're, we're now halfway through. Has right? anyone got a uh, full point so far? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, uh. I'm having a sip of my wine. <laughs> oh, you deserve it. So I've got a few. 
So no one, no one uh, got full points yet, but um, how, well? No, I haven't added them up. We've okay. not been very polite. Oh, from some of you. Question 26. It's a light-hearted question. There's a bit of subjective thought involved here. I think you'll agree with the answers when you hear them. The question is, please name three current lady members of the EVTS. A clue, one is much taller than the other two, who are renowned for their invariably flamboyant hats. <laughs> Christian names and surnames, please, to be polite to the ladies. Uh -huh. One point for each correct name. And the answer is Charlotte Molesworth, do we have yeah. photos? Yes. So there's four Elizabeth in that Hilliard. case. Elizabeth <laughs> Hilliard. Yes. Yeah. Elizabeth, you, I'm not sure if you're doing the quiz. Your name is on the list. I'm not sure that Elizabeth has actually been able to join us. What a pity. <laughs> now I see her blushing from a distance. And the third is the tall one is Georgie Barnard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Then what, what about Karen Jakes? She also, and Anna oh, Joyce. Joyce, who um, used to design hats. We had a... Day when we had a parade, but that's true. There's so there's a lot of them, really. It's five of them. The whole thing. So got three. Well, well done on that, Mary. But I didn't know those names so well. <laughs> oh yes, you you might not have known them. Those are the those are the three significant ones. Yes. Good. Anyway, just a bit of fun. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. In 550 BC, the king Cyrus the Great of Persia felt so safe from invaders and so secure in the affection of his own people. He built a palace on a flat plain in the south of the country without any defences around it at all. Instead, it was surrounded by an open garden. But this is quite a special garden. Incorporated plantings and architecture, water rills and shade-giving pavilions. This garden has given which beautiful one-word name to posterity? In a clue, it's a word that probably describes your own garden as it is now. Or as in your dreams, and with lockdown a bit further advanced, okay. it very soon will be. I a place of exceptional happiness and delight. And the one word answer is Paradise. Paradise. Paradise, Paradise of course. Angry yeah. Paradise. Paradise. So did I? You may have noticed I rather like that word and its origins. Um, and I was very lucky to get to Iran um, a couple of years ago when there was a calmer sort of year in Iran. And we went there. It's amazing how he would just build in that flat plain with no defences at all back in those days. Made quite an impression on me. Uh, 28. 28. The great actress and beauty of her day, also a society figure and famous mistress of an earlier Prince of Wales, who's widely known as the... The answer is Jersey Lily. It was the Jersey Lily. Hooray! And of course her name was, anybody want to say? Lily Langtree. Lily Langtree. Well done. Uh, 29. What is the English name for a circus siliquestrum tree? Judas tree. Judas tree. Judas tree. Yeah. Right? Ah, yes. Sir. 30. What is the name of the UBTS member who was the founder of the English Gardening School? And the answer is Rosemary Alexander. Alexander. Yeah. Oh, Rosemary Alexander. 31. Um, now this is one point for three right answers and two points for all six. Well, spelling mistake. It's spelling it's flower, not cornflower. Sorry, that's my fault. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, that's an extra mark for that person. Who was that? Thank you, Linda. Linda. <laughs> the Latin name for falling plants coneflower is Rudbeckia. Yeah. And a pink yeah, is Dianthus. Mm. Yes. Plantain lily is hosta. Yes. Snowflake is leucotrum. Oyum. The cat mint is nepeta. Oh, yeah. And sage is salvia. Yeah, I'm sorry, sage rather than the harsh word, salvia, much prettier. I've got echinacea for all. Coneflower. Echinacea, I've got for Echinacea is Echinacea, not Rebecca. Echinacea for which? For coneflower. The coneflower. Oh, well, am I wrong? No, no, I yeah. think it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have echinacea as well. <laughs> I haven't consciously had echinacea anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Not even for a cold. <laughs> <laughs> I may get soon. I think the wind is calming down. Right. Yeah. 
That was question, what was that? Never mind. Question 31. 31. It says question 25 at the top, Chris, you're confusing me. Oh, Sorry. 32, here we are. Obviously, I was, I was getting a bit lax with the... I'm mainly following my script, actually. One of Bertie Woodhouse <coughs> from the G's stories of P.G. Woodhouse is dot, 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 Travers, better known as Aunt dot, dot, dot. Dahlia. The missing name is that of a flower, what is it? Dahlia. 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 Well done. Dahlia. 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 Aunt is Agatha, but Dahlia is the, the floral aunt, if I can call her that. Oh. Question Dahlia. 33. These questions are all about Gertrude Jekyll. And questions A and B are these sort of multiple choice type questions, which I've avoided elsewhere, I think. But just on her, there are three choices here. Her life dates were, you can see them. I don't think you need me to trot them out. And the options are one, two, and three. Sure. Which of those three is correct? No trap, because one of them is correct. And the answer is three. Hooray! 1943 to 1932. Okay. Um, going on, B, which is the right answer, she created some 400, some 320, some 270 gardens in the UK, Europe and America. Which of those three figures is correct? Again, no trap. That was a good guess. The answer is some 400. Have we done one? one. Is she really? It's amazing. I didn't think she could. Busy, busy lady. Remember. C, what is the name of the famous architect she often collaborated with? The answer is Edwin Lutyens. Yeah. D, what is the name of her home near Godalming in Surrey for 35 years? Edward. Munstead Wood. Oh, of course it is. Edward, I couldn't, I knew it was a wood. E, e, what was the name of her husband? She never married. She didn't marry. Oh, well Trick done. question. She never that married. Was a question. She yeah. never married. She never had a child. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you put trick question, or she never married, or not applicable, or anything like that, you've got a mark. Uh, that's the only trap in the whole thing, I think. It says on the page one, there's no traps, no tricks. <laughs> question 34. That was the, that was the trick. A quote, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Which book of the Bible does that quote come from? Ecclesiastes. Yes, Ecclesiastes and chapter three. Uh, I always think that's such a beautiful quote and we happen to have it on a sundial we have here. A lovely quote, I think. It's all about life and plants. 35. This is a very serious question here. I think this, this question this question requires more than one point for a correct answer. <laughs> oh, in view, the, in view of the importance of it. I wonder why you're saying that. <laughs> what do you say the answer? Which form of the UTS do you associate with fundraising auctions and a pink hunting coat? And the answer is Mark Hopkins. Mark Hopkins. Can I have a bonus name? I've got the middle name. Mark Gregory. Well Greg. No, you don't. I think no extra remarks. I think that really is to throw. <laughs> Question 36. What was the two word slogan used in Berkeley, California in the late 1960s, early 1970s by anti war protesters? and then embraced by hippies? The answer is flower power. Flower power. Okay. Well done. 37. Who is the designer of the much acclaimed new wall garden at Scampston Hall in North Yorkshire? And the answer is Pete Udolf. Hooray! Yeah, Udolf. It is lovely if you haven't seen it yet. It's well, well worth seeing. Fantastic English comes from the Remember the War Garden? Yes. Yeah. 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 The answer is Oscar Wilde. Oh, it's my slight surprise. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. He's Irish. 
That's oh. a pretty one. <laughs> Hello, this is, uh, so an extra bonus point, I think. <laughs> I think I should award a well, bonus point for that. I didn't get the I didn't get the answer right, so <laughs> no. Well forget the bonus point though. <laughs> Thirty-nine. Um, now here it's gonna be one point if you get both the answers right. Thirty-nine A. What's the correct formal name for the art of cutting trees and bushes into different shapes? <laughs> the answer is? We don't know. <laughs> no idea. Thank you, really. <laughs> Anybody who didn't get this is going to be embarrassed, I think. You have B, to resign. B, what is the technical term? I should say B here. What is the technical term used by gardens today for the word that has a Latin origin as spatula and a later Italian derivation from spala? Ah. spala. The answer is espalier. Oh, wow. I thought it was another thing you had. <laughs> so, you need both, both of those right to earn one point there. <laughs> Question 40. What is the name of the editor of our beautiful magazine, Topiarius? Oh, I think right. this one. The answer is Caroline Foley. Let you into it. Away so well, doesn't she? It's always produced the wonderful magazine. Yeah. And uh, just to let you into a little bit of a secret, it's going to uh, get even more beautiful when it comes out in September because we've just taken on an art director uh, who is now working with Caroline to produce the magazine. So it's going to go even better. Mm -hmm. Sub must be going up, I think, Chris. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've, we've worked very hard on uh, to be able to achieve it, believe me. Yeah, they're good to have, have some help, I'm sure. Question 41. What is the three word American expression for this phrase? Everything is turning out to be good. Flu is also the title of a song from the musical Gypsy performed by Ethel Merman, Shirley Bassey, and many others. The answer is everything's coming up roses. Second line, please. That was a slightly period question. It wouldn't be for young members of the UTS, that one. 42. The Roman poet Ovid is credited with a notion behind an idiom that we all know to use when other people's situations look better than your own. The last word of nine in that idiom is side. Please supply the eight words before it. And the answer is the grass is always greener on the other. Yes. Even if you're standing in your own paradise, you might still feel that about the lawn next door. Mm. <laughs> uh, 43, UTS question, what is the name of the lovely Belgian lady, an aristocrat, who was involved at the very birth of EBTS in 1996, and has held many senior positions over the years with EBTS in the UK, Belgium, Holland and France? Well, you wouldn't know it. She's very modest about all that, I think. And the answer is, wait for it, Countess Veronique Goblet d'Alviella. Yes, I've spelled it right. What do you say? <laughs> so, Linda, I would hope you would spell it right, given that you're our membership section. Just you, Linda, that one. So, one point if you've got a Christian in some recognizable way. One point for a recognizable version of a Christian in the and a bonus point if you spell out her aristocratic title. And full name faultlessly like Linda. <laughs> 44. Yeah. Which famous botanist and gardener was educated at the King's School, Canterbury, my old school, in the, early 18th, in the early 17th century, just a few years before me, undertook collecting expeditions to Virginia and the US, became head gardener to Charles I, happily without losing his own head, introduced magnolia and tulip tree to England, lived in Lambeth, and lends his name to a well-known herbaceous perennial, most often, but not always, blue. And the answer is John Tradescant. Yes. You can have white ones too, I think, but it's the blue that one tends to see most of. Oh, I thought it was trying to think of something. How did you know that, though? I knew that too. So and if you might know his name from the um, uh, Garden Museum, where they have his uh, grave. 
Yeah. Yeah. I hope you all notice everybody, Mary Hopkins is now getting her own back on mark a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite normal, I'm used to it. Time for a drink, Mark. 45. <laughs> I'm getting a bit scientific here. Bam Gascoigne might have said it's a bit too scientific for him. It is for me normally, but question 45. Um, and here, one point for two right answers and two points if you get all five. Right. Right. Technical description term for A, something that is toothed, and the answer is serrate. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The a perennial underground stem, usually mm -hmm. growing horizontally, is a rhizome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy one, I think. The fruit of a rose plant is hip. D, something in groups of three. There must be other words, but the word I've got is ternate. Oh, I've got triangle. But perhaps I well, trifoliate. Trifoliate. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good answer. Okay. Have yeah. Any other answers? Well, we can have trifoliate, can we? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's leaf. <laughs> and E, something heart shaped is chordate. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've got. Four out of five. Sounds more like ammunition, the last one. Um, <laughs> right, so one point for two right answers there and two points for all five. Is that yeah. What about what something two? Talk about, was it? Oh, about, was it one point for two right answers. Oh, good. I, what about dentata for two? Which one? Oh, yeah. uh, we had dentata. Oh, dentata. What's what your answer for two? Denticulata for two. Oh, dental. 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 Right. Dental. So one thing that's right? Yeah. <coughs> Chris, you can arbitrate. Let's give that a point. Let's give that a point, yes. There's yeah. enough people saying yeah. it's right, so. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. What is six? <laughs> the book written by Alexandre Dumas, later adapted for the stage, for films, starring the likes of Sarah Bernhardt and Greta Garbo, for an opera by Verdi, has a four-word title. Last word of that is from the world of flowers. Please supply the whole of that French title. And forgive my pronunciation, but the answer is La Dame aux Camélias. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Good heavens. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Hopkins inquest going on. 47. <laughs> I'm amazed at how intelligent my wife is. <laughs> oh, oh. And it just discovered. Yes. <laughs> I hope we you're doing this done. separately, so we can get Mary's yeah. score to go with yours, Mark. <laughs> 47 is one point for each right answer. A, the word hydrangea is derived from the Greek word for what? And the answer water. is water vessel. Mm. Just right. do water. 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 I've just got water. Just water? Water. Are you water. I think water probably gets the mark. I would have thought, I thought water is a pretty good answer. Yeah. And apologies for my spelling of vessel. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Water gets the mark. And aquilegia is derived from the Latin word for what? The yeah. answer here is eagle. Oh, eagle. So what? that's Latin eagle. eagle, which I never knew before. Yeah. Little eagles. Mm -hmm. Little eagle heads all on the back of the bar. Question 48. I'm into drinking now. <laughs> Question 48. In Homer's The Odyssey, it's translated from the Greek by Samuel Butler. What is the two word hyphenated adjective in lower case that precedes the third word, which is dawn? Now, this is Rosy quite a fingered. famous phrase. Rosy fingered. The answer is. Well done, Rosy Neil. Fingered. Rosy fingered. Rosy fingered. Okay. Well Question 49. Can you have one? Which UPTS member used to be a filmmaker on TV, regularly contributes wonderful photographs to Toby Arias, and has developed over many years Corpus Deep Mill Garden in Norfolk? And the answer is Roger Last. Good photo for him and of his garden. Yes, very smart photo. That's quite a garden. Yes, it is. It's brilliant. Did go there again? Did he pose especially for that, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> that was his, uh, at the launch of his book. Ah, yeah. yeah. 50, we're almost there now. If we don't say, oh, 50, um, one point for three right answers here and two points for all six. This is what is the common name in English for these plants? The parva, the answer is poppy. Poppy, yes, got that. Vinca, it is periwinkle. Yep. Trollius, it is glowflower. 
Yeah. Rostanthera, it is mint bush, yeah. which Ali and I love, but they don't seem to last too many years here. Uh, Nifophia is red hot poker, and Schizostylis is kaffir lily. Now, 51, this is where I actually made a slight mistake in my mind and in my own typing. Um, you get one point for A, one point for B, and a third point rather than the second one, a third demop happy point if you combine them into the topical phrase at the moment. 51A, the answer is corona. Yeah. B, of course, is virus. Yeah. The demob happy point, you have to get right at that point. Oh, that's Chris, that's really clever. The answers have danced down to coronavirus. Yes. So that's the finale. Well done, Peter. Well done. Okay. 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 Five points. Well, Chris and I are still debating it, really. So the question is, everyone, what points did we get? Uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes to um, top them all up, but then we're going to whiz round uh, and ask ask you how many you got. Chris, you'll be pleased to know I've arranged, um, I've prepared to ask this rather tactical question. Sorry, say that again, Peter. When they've done their totting, I have arranged to ask in a tactful way what is their score. I'll leave you to it. Which you did suggest to me. Yes. Very wisely. I'm going to do it like that. Excellent. I, I'm a bit confused at the end. You say maximum possible score and then plus the bonus point in question 43. No, in 51, uh, the answer to A for one point is Corona, right. yep. B for one point is Virus, yep. and lastly, for a stupid bonus point, really, the third point is putting them together and saying Coronavirus. So the 43 is uh, the arbitrary. And... No, the 43 was the spelling. Point was for spelling Veronique's uh, full uh, title and name absolutely spot on. So there was a, ver a bonus point in 43 as well. Yes, a bonus point 43 if you get her absolutely classically right, like Lynn has. Completely disgraceful. Right. First point if you get it vaguely recognisably right. <laughs> so how are we doing? Has everyone managed to get their scoring done? <coughs> Okay, Peter. I think it, I think the time has come to oh. tact, well, tactfully. Then, as you, sure. tact so, does anybody claim to have notched up all seventy-five points? <clears throat> <clears throat> Do I hear a definite <clears throat> reply? The oh, Hopkins dear. seem to have got very bored and to put, given us a picture of their remote control for their television. Linda, uh, no, I tried to get back to all of you, uh, and I <coughs> couldn't get what your. You I couldn't get your thing. Uh, uh, just <laughs> spin that round the other way. There we are. Okay. So the next okay. question is: Does anybody claim to got more than seventy? Seventy or more? Anybody? Close. No, <laughs> <laughs> all rubbish. <laughs> the next question, you can see the way I'm going. The next question is everybody claimed to got 60 or more. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> the next question, anybody claimed got 50 or more? I think we better all go home and open a bottle of wine soon. <laughs> 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 so I'm taking it down a bit now. The next, anybody claimed to got 40? 44. Yes. Oh, well done. Oh, wow. 46. Oh, 46. Uh, 46. Well, have well done. you done it together? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it seems like it's a Frenkel winner, narrowly, from the caves. <laughs> well done. Well, well done to you two. Very good. No prizes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Honour. Honour. It's all for honour and love of the EBTS, etc. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> now, we just have a, let's just have a volume answer for this. Who's got over 30? Let's hear a bit of volume. Uh, yes. Hey. 38 for us. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. I got 29. I got 29. I got 29. There's no embarrassment factor going to be revealed. I won't yeah. go down on 30. But you can have fun. Well, then, then, then. You get this. So I think that's it. Well done. Peter. Well done, Peter. Well done. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you very much. I didn't say at the beginning, I originally had the idea, um, there's a charity I'm chairman of, the Sports Neurology Hospital in London, and we had a quiz. It's our, just our second one. 
month or two ago. And at the end of it, I suddenly thought to myself, how many quiz the UTS? That might be quite fun to do after an AGM dinner or on a tour or something, uh, compared with a skit or other jakey thing. And that was in my mind. And then when this little bit of trouble came along, I realised the UTS wasn't doing anything this year. And I suddenly thought, oh, well, I'm going to have a bit of time. Maybe I can have a more intelligent quiz and see if it appeals to Chris. So that was the origins of it. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, do you want to make any closing? Uh, yes, I'd, I'd like to say thank you for thank you to everyone for uh, for joining in. It's uh, it's been great fun to do. We this is the first one we've tried to do. Uh, so uh, if you've enjoyed it, maybe we can convince uh, Peter to come up with another quiz, or someone else might like to come up with another quiz. The other thing I'd be interested to know is if you're interested. In the idea, if, if we carry on in lockdown for much, much longer, if we were able to get someone to be a speaker and maybe do a talk or something like that, uh, let me know if you'd be interested in that sort of thing. I know various other societies are doing that. Um, so if you are interested or maybe even interested in doing the talk, uh, do get in touch with us because uh, apart from the AGM and the Learn to Clip course this year, we're probably not going to be, well, we're not going to be able to do our uh, garden visits which is particularly disappointing Lady Scott for not being able to come to, to your garden because we were very very much in, uh, looking forward to that. Right. Less, less like paradise at the moment um, so I can, <laughs> I can relax a bit but I'm sorry you can't make it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yes all, the good, th good news is that all but one of the uh, t visits that we're doing have uh, been rescheduled for next year there are still places if people want to come to Scotland, uh, do sign up for that if you want. Uh, obviously, the, sorry, the other one that will be going ahead, hopefully this year, uh, subject to government guidelines, is of course the uh, Portugal uh, trip, which is uh, organised through uh, Boxwood Tours. So, And there's still uh, a few, few spaces left on that one as well. But fingers crossed, next one is up to Linda's place to do our Learn to Clip course, which is fully booked now, which is terrific. So our training uh, courses are going well. Um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to, to that one uh, in <laughs> October. Chris, can I just say thank you for your help to me and congratulations on the technology. And glory yes, absolutely. It's, well, a, well. it's a pleasure, yeah, well. but next time I will send them out to be spell checked first to make sure that my <laughs> typing uh, was somewhat better. The next time should definitely be a quiz devised by one of the others of you. I won't go again. <laughs> Thank you very it's much. Thanks on lights quizzes. The RHS does a gardener's and gardener's quiz and puzzle book. Which um, can you see that? Yeah. Um, none, I don't think any any of Peter's questions were in there. I didn't actually look, but I, well, I didn't have that source to use. So. But it's quite <laughs> fun to do. Mm. Good. <laughs> That's it. Okay. And the other interesting thing to do in lockdown is the Cranham publication series of garden portfolio jigsaw puzzles, <laughs> some of which <laughs> feature some of the gardens we've actually visited. Well, that would be nice. But don't all go rush out and buy them because there won't be any left for us when we've run out of our seats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Right. right. Well, thank you all very, very much for, for joining in this afternoon. Uh, Ty, you've got plenty of time to get a decent drink ready for Boris. Yes. Oh, Sorry. yeah, yes. yes. Speaking on at seven. Seven, yeah. seven o'clock, BBC One. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Oh, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Peter. Terrific. Thank you very much. Bye, Linda. Bye, Linda. Bye, 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 Bye all. Bye. Bye. Bye.